on earlier, <clears throat> titled Sunday Nights in Winter. Speak right into the mic, please. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> December 30th. It had become a nightly ritual for Gavin. At 10 o'clock, he stripped naked, sprawled on his bed, pulled his laptop beside him, logged on to his favorite porn site, and masturbated. He admired smooth, lean, vascular bodies and full, pouty lips, but he wasn't a stickler about abs, tattoos, body fat, or penis size, the physical characteristics many other gay men valued so highly. He enjoyed watching real men, not models or porn stars, enjoy their bodies and the bodies of others, male or female, the display of carnality without the, distinction, without the distraction of elaborate sets, choreographed sex, and worst of all, bad porn plots. <laughs> no, no one killed lust quite like individuals who tried to make sex glossy, sanitized, and ideal. Desire was desire, and he couldn't understand why anyone would waste time constructing rules for pleasure. He hadn't had sex with another person since an encounter he had almost immediately after he and Matthew split up. His name was Ed, a caramel-skinned black man with thick, hard pectorals and biceps like footballs Gavin met one crowded night at Sidetrack. Ed was in town for International Mr. Leather. He bought them beers, and they engaged in the usual superficial banter people have in bars before Gavin invited him home. They spent a half hour necking on the couch and 30 minutes having sex that was neither passionate nor pleasurable. It felt like something Gavin was obligated to do after letting Ed pay, pay for his drinks all night and listening to him talk about renovating his new home in Rittenhouse Square. When the sex was over, Ed got dressed, gave Gavin a quick peck on the cheek and said, check you later, and left. Gavin blamed himself. He just wasn't ready to be sexual with other people, and he was never one for rec to have recreational sex. Masturbation provided him the quick release he needed without emotional entanglements, hurt feelings, or disappointments. It seldom took Gavin long to find a video clip that aroused him, and once he did, he completed the act quickly. His orgasm usually left him drowsy and innervated, and within moments, he would fall into a restful sleep. On his laptop, two muscular men, one smooth and tan, the other tattooed from head to foot, lay side by side kissing furiously while they masturbated. Gavin imagines himself between them, sharing their kisses, stroking them, and being stroked by them. Pleasure came to him without haste. He was about to come when he stopped abruptly, rose, and sat upright on the edge of his bed. He looked down at his testicles and inspected them with slow, meticulous hands, hoping to disprove what he already knew. But the more his fingers traced it, the less he, it could be denied. A painless lump the size of a lima bean on his left testicle. Gavin tightened his jaw and grinded his teeth. He shut his eyes tight and exhaled a long breath. When he opened his eyes, he glanced down at the porn stars on his laptop. They came almost at the same time, each man rub rubbing the other's semen into his stomach while they continued kissing. January 3rd. Dr. Shaw's hands were icy no matter what time of year Gavin visited him. Dressed in nothing but the washed out turquoise robe the nurse told him to put on, Gavin stood in front of Dr. Shaw, wishing that the lump he found a few nights ago posed no threat. It's definitely a solid mass, Dr. Shaw said. I'm going to make an appointment for you to get an ultrasound tomorrow. It's typical in a case like this. I thought they only did that for pregnant women, Gavin said. Well, it's just a test that allows us to see what's going on, what type of mass this is, benign or malignant. Those were words Gavin didn't want to hear. Up until that moment, the worst thing any doctor ever said to him was, I know those chicken pox itch, buddy, but try not to scratch them. Mm -hmm. Benign and malignant were terms associated with old people and women in movies on Lifetime. No one under 50 should ever have to hear the words benign and malignant, especially a guy under 40. Especially one who could bench press 250 pounds, didn't smoke, and seldom ate red meat. Benign and malignant are your choices no one with stupid loan debt and 22 years of mortgage payments ahead of him needed to hear. Gavin trembled slightly as he searched Dr. Shaw's eyes for comfort and empathy. Any indication that he was not about to go through months of sickness, surgery, and pain, all in in death. Do I have cancer? Will I lose my testicle? If you have cancer, there's a good chance you might, but it may not be cancer. People get all kinds of lumps and bumps for no reason at all, and sometimes they go away as mysteriously as they came. The human body holds lots of mysteries, Gavin, don't despair. 
let's get the results for your ultrasound and blood work, and we'll go from there. I need you to stay positive. He placed a hand on Gavin's shoulder, but Gavin felt no comfort. 